I love the fact that I'm sort of reconnecting to style in a way that feels as joyous as it did when I was a kid. I was obsessed with Wizard of Oz when I was a kid, only because of the ruby slippers. Anything sparkly, anything shiny, I went to like a turkey. And at five, somebody asked me what I wanted to do with my life, and I said I wanted to be a cocktail waitress, because that was the only job that I knew of at the time where you could wear fishnet stockings and like short tutu skirts. I do think that if any of the viewers from What Not To Wear saw this outfit, they would think that I would need to be on my own show. I'm much more interested in what makes me happy now. I know myself a lot more now. I think the box that I felt I had to be in on What Not To Wear really was about figure flattering easy to wear, generic, put together style that didn't offend anybody. When you have to kind of please so many viewers, you want to do something that is a little bit safe, a little bit easy to repeat so that the audience feels like they know you. If I went back to television, I wouldn't be able to conform to what I wore before. I look forward to my style evolution. I am going to be 50 years old and I can wear a princess dress. Everybody should be able to accept new versions of themselves because that way they'll be much more accepting of other people. This dress is um, from Wit New York and it was uh, something that I saw in the spring collections and lost my mind. These earrings, you know, I bought these on the street. I love the color. I don't think that everything needs to be expensive and precious to be wonderful. I can find something really cheap and crappy and think it is just the perfect thing for me. And that's one of the nicest things about personal style is nobody gets to tell you what isn't isn't beautiful. This outfit has like real special meaning for me. I designed my vans. I designed them. I designed them because I wanted black sparkles and I made the heels pink sparkles. I have to have a little sparkle or the day just doesn't work out for me. I have worn these pants probably for three years. They're G-Star. They're so lightweight. I consider them a neutral. And this shirt is cool. The woman who is the founder and designer of it is a woman named Nikki Kuehl, who has been my friend since first grade. It's a tank top and like a white canvas pant. Like I thought I would wear it casually with sneakers, but when I went to try these pants on at the store, they, the only shoes they had to try things on with were these high heels. And I was like, oh, I mean, I should probably, oh no, I, I, I did put on an earring. There you go. But I was like, this is, revolutionary. It, it literally transformed the way I saw these pants. And that's always super exciting to me. When you can surprise yourself with the way you are going to wear something. This happens to me more as I age than it did when I thought I knew everything. I think the more open I am, the more, the more exciting actually style becomes. A lot of people look at my streak and they're like, you would look so much younger if you dyed it. And I'm like, well, I don't actually think about this in terms of age at all. I think of this as a battle cry. <laughs> I got this when I was very sick with psoriasis. It just kind of showed up. And it feels almost like a good luck talisman to me. Like I would never, ever, ever get rid of it. And I'm actually getting more and more gray and I'm kind of psyched. I mean, if I can have silver hair this long, that is dope. It just didn't become an issue until I was much more in the public eye. And then it became sort of a streak. It was like me, Cruella DeVille, Rogue from X-Men. You know, it was like very distinguishable. And I kind of liked that. And even now, if people recognize me, they either recognize me by my voice or my hair. I don't want to change things about me. I want them to be reflective of who I am and my life experience. And this is a part of me. And the only time that I tried to dye it, I wanted to tint it like a baby pink. And I did. And then it fell out. And I had to go to the Paris collections with a sprout. Menopause is two things for me. Sweating to the point that it looks like I went swimming at the most inopportune time possible. And the other thing is that I literally can remember nothing. It's funny that I feel in some ways more youthful now than I did in my 20s. In my 20s, I was so lost and unhappy in so many ways. I was trying to be cool and fabulous, even when I was at my heavy weight. But the idea that I could say that I worked at Vogue, I went on these exotic trips and got to shoot models and all of this stuff made me feel like when I went to a cocktail party, I could be cool instead of really grappling with what was causing all of the you know, eating issues in my life, what I really wanted for my life, instead of just worrying about the surface, I wasn't asking the real questions. And because of that, I don't really remember my 20s at all. And I definitely think that I looked better at 40 than I did at 30. So I'm not sure I'm gonna look as good at 50 as I did at 40, but that's sort of not the point. I'm willing to give that up 
in order to have the knowledge and the confidence that I have now. There are moments where I wake up and I'm like, it's never going to be the same. It's never going to be the way it was. And you can look at that with sadness or you can look at that as an opportunity. Just because something hasn't been yet doesn't mean it won't be wonderful. There's a boxing match going on in my head. And, you know, there's the evil boxer and the nice boxer. So the light side is like, you're always beautiful, Stacey. You're beautiful for who you are, you know? And I believe that. But at the same time, I'm like, no, I'm never beautiful. I can feel beauty because I wrote something that I'm proud of. And it feels like an extension of who I am. And that's beautiful. I can feel beautiful because I look like damn hot in an outfit that I put together and I'm so proud of that. Beauty is about love and confidence and contentment and it's not about the surface. Some of the best advice that I can give is to step away from the mirror and find your reflection in the eyes of the people who love you and care about you and want you to succeed and then go back to the mirror later. Because we can't just think of beauty as being a surface. It's actually incredibly more complicated and I think uh, far more enriching to talk about it in a different way.